Good evening and welcome to Carne Carnegie Town Hall. I'd like to call this December 7th Pearl Harbor Day meeting to order. I would like to emphasize a couple of items. Please silence all your telephones, cell phones, excuse me. Then in an effort to have sufficient time to hear from audience members, we ask that when you come to the podium, please identify yourself and state your address for the record. Limit your comments to five minutes and please ensure you are delivering new testimony to the commissioners. Commissioners, most of your mics do not work. We will be passing one around, so speak loudly. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, we'll approve the consent agenda. Denise, please read the items on the consent agenda, one through 10. Yes, Mr. Chair. Item one, approval of November 1st, 2016 minutes of regular meeting. Item two, November Platts. Item three, 5765, 2016 rezone from AG Agricultural District to I2 Heavy Industrial District for allowed forms located at 1900 North Bonson Avenue. Item four, 798 2016 rezoned from the CN Conservation District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar and LW Live Work Districts for allowed forms located at 2600 West 57th Street. Item 5 5878 2016 rezoned from the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar and Rec Creation Districts to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar and Rec Recreation Districts for allowed forms located at the southwest corner of East 41st Street and South Veterans Parkway. Item six, 5957-2016, rezoned from CN Conservation District to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District for allowed forms at 3201 South Nick Ann Court. Item seven, 5963, 2016, rezoned from the RT1 single family residential traditional district to the LW Live Work District for allowed forms located at 601 North Duluth Avenue. Item eight, 5996, 2016, Rezoned from the AG Agriculture District to the RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density District for allowed forms located at the southeast corner of West 85th Street and South Brett Avenue. Item 9. 5997 2016. Rezoned from the O Office District to LW Live Work District for allowed forms located at 1001. South Sertoma Avenue. Item 10, 5813-2016, preliminary subdivision plan for Hidden Valley Stables Edition located north of West 57th Street and west of I-229. Okay, thank you, Denise. Are there any objections from the audiences on items one through 10? Please come forward. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe there are several uh, neighbors that would like item eight pulled and moved to the regular agenda, please. Thank you, Jason. Are there any other items on the uh, consent agenda? All right. Any objections from the commissioners on items one through ten? All right. Okay, next. We have a request to move item eight to the regular agenda, so I look for a motion approving Item eight to the regular agenda. Pardon me, Mr. Chair. You need to approve the consent agenda first, please. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion for approval. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by, oh, now I need a motion for the, to, now we need a motion to, re, we have a request. A motion to uh, <laughs> move number eight to the regular agenda. There we go. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Now we'll vote on the amendment first. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 
All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now we'll vote on the consent agenda as amendment, amended moving item eight to the regular agenda. Do you need a motion? I have a motion. No, All right, no. got a motion. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now we'll move to the regular agenda. I need a motion to approve the regular agenda and a second. So made. Second. Got a motion and a second for the regular agenda. Uh, by the way, every, anybody that was here through, for items one through 10, except for eight, is, are free to leave. All right. Denise, would you read item number eight, please? We'll start with that. Yes, Mr. Chair. We haven't approved oh, the regular first. agenda yet. Yep. Oh, Sorry. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cold, cold out. outside. All right, I need a motion. We do have Proof. a motion. I mean, I mean, all in favor of the regular agenda, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign, regular agenda passes. Item eight. 5996-2016 rezoned from AG Agriculture District to the RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density District for allowed forms located at the southeast corner of West 85th Street and South Brett Avenue. Good evening, Diane DeCoyer with the Planning Office. The applicant is Daniel Costello with Costello Company. The project is located at the southeast corner of South Brett Avenue and West 85th Street. The request is to rezone 5.05 acres from the Ag Agriculture to the RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density to construct three 32-unit apartment buildings. A Level B buffer yard is required um, to the south or adjacent to the DD2 forms. Um, this, came, this petition came uh, before Planning Commission in November of last year and was approved but denied by City Council due to concerns that the adjacent neighbors to the east had uh, for the project. We have not received any phone calls from neighbors on the project with the current petition, but there may be someone here tonight that wishes to ask questions um, of you. The applicant did speak with neighbors to the south who indicated that they were fine with the proposed project. The proposed multifamily residential uses will provide necessary transitions from the future limited access arterial at West 85th Street and South Brett Avenue as a major collector to the existing single family uses to the east and south. Uh, Joan Franken with Costello Company is here tonight representing the applicant if you have any questions for her. Otherwise, I would also be happy to answer any questions you might have. Commissioners, are there any questions of staff on this item? Thank you, Diane. Is the petitioner here? Good evening, <clears throat> Mr. Gasper, members of the commission. My name is Damian Gribble. I'm with Earhart Griffin and Associates, 300 North Dakota Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, again, this is a petition that was approved by Planning Commission before. It did go to City Council. I think at that time, City Council had asked that a, a sketch plan or a concept plan be submitted on what could be developed with the property if it uh, granting was zoned. At that time, we did not have a concept plan submitted to city council. At this time, we do. So again, this is a concept plan. This is may not be the final plan, but this is what we could do if allowed to have this zone. Um, again, this zoning that we're asking for does meet the Shape Shoe Falls comprehensive plan. Um, we do provide for uh, buffer yards all around this property. Um, being uh, against the residential on the south side of the property, a, a level B buffer yard is provided. 15 feet is required. We show a concept of 20 feet on that. Um, the property to the east is not yet annexed into the city of Sioux Falls. So being that it's not annexed into the city, what we have to provide is the buffer yard to the least dense use if it was annexed into the city. So for that would be that it's single family residential. Again, if it was annexed into the city, we would plan a 15 foot uh, buffer yard or a level B buffer yard for that area. What we have shown on this concept plan is um, almost a 40 foot buffer to the east. So again, 
um, if this property was annexed into the city as single family residential, we would provide the buffer yard required for that. If it was annexed into the city and provided a more dense use, obviously we would be able to reduce that buffer yard, but we would either meet or exceed that buffer yard standards for the city. Um, let's see. Uh, again, we're at the location of an arterial street and a major collector street. We believe this is a good fit for this property, a, a appropriate use for the property. Surrounding properties also have this appropriate use um, uh, in this area. And um, with that, we, we believe it's a good use for the property and we would appreciate a uh, vote for approval on this uh, rezoning annexation or re rezoning. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Commissioners, uh, any questions of Damien? Nope. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the audience that would like to speak on this item? Please come forward and state your name and address, please. Good evening, I'm Amy McEwen. I'm the property on the east side of this that is um, still agricultural. Um, we had talked to the city, just so you know, about being annexed in, and at this point it just, for them and us, hasn't made sense to go that far yet. But we do realize we will be annexed back into. Um, but we're looking for, and as you can see, um, the south neighboring properties are here also. and. So we're all would like to speak to you and, and try to stop this rezoning and go from a more transition like uh, twin homes or single family homes as they're doing on the, like I think, north side of 85th Street. On the east side of Brett, which over on that side is called Bill Road, they are doing single family right next to the single family residential. And then across on the west side of Brett and um, Bill is um, townhomes and then apartments, sorry, then apartments. So we would like that same consideration as they are on that side, that same transition, twin homes or single family homes, and then across what they already did was townhomes. So thank you. Any qu oh, questions, yeah. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this item? Hi, uh, Troy Hokeness, uh, 7621 South Afton Avenue. Um, my property is located just north of there, across the uh, 85th Street um, corridor there. I guess a um, couple things I want to point out. Um, Three sides of this property have potential, well, two sides right now are single family residential. And if rural residential gets zoned in down the road, that's gonna mean three sides of this property are single family residential. So can somebody explain to us, is there anywhere else in town that um, RA2 is surrounded by three sides of single family residential? Um, it seems to me that we're going against the transition of the whole shape places zoning ordinance that came out um, calling for a transition of zoning from single family to RA2. And uh, I guess I disagree with um, their earlier comment of other properties in this vicinity have similar zoning. Well, um, to the north there, RA1 is um, right across the street is single family residential. So we're going from RA1 to RA2 and there's no transition there. Um, so. That's my point is there's, there's no transition from RA2 to single family residential. There should be at least a, a twin home development. Um, RD1, I think is the terminology, I guess, in zoning terms as a transition, or at least the RA1 um, transition that, that we have to the north there, as you can see um, on Beale. So that'd be uh, my main points to make. And uh, I guess there's other, other issues such as the traffic increase um, property values, we could talk about that. I think a few of the other neighbors were going to address that too. So that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. 
Does anyone else from the audience like to speak on this issue? Hi, good evening. My name is Angie McCarthy. Um, my husband Adam and I live at 4200 West 88th Street. So we are directly to the south, right behind this. This will be right in our backyard. Um, we actually have just lived at this property for just almost a year. And with that undeveloped land behind when we purchased the home, we were concerned of what would go back there. So I did a lot of checking and investigating on what it was zoned for currently, what the proposed plans could be. Um, at that time, Brett Avenue was just starting to be opened up. It did not exist. And so we did get confirmation from the builders on the west side of Brett Avenue of what the plans were over there. And they also, you know, have their, to the far south, closer down to 90th, they have a housing development that is comparable to the same price range of the home that we live in. And then it transitions into will be twin homes just to the west of our property where 88th Street stops. That still has not been built, but that's what they have showed us the plans for that it, it will be twin homes. And then it transitions into the apartments that lead up to 85th Street. And that's all on the west side of Brett. So, you know, we were a little apprehensive, but I had faith in the in the fact that typically they just don't build apartment buildings right behind a home like that without some sort of transition. So, you know, we kind of put faith in the fact that they just more than likely would not zone that to put that right behind our house. And um, now with the plans moving forward, you know, we have seen what they plan to do back there. And our backyard is not that large. So, I mean, without being able to show you exactly what it looks like, 20 feet in from the property line, our back door that you walk, our walkout, they'll be like 50 feet. That building will be on top of our house. I mean, it's going to be right behind us. And so, I mean, I just, you don't see that around here. And, you know, this is not a starter home in my mind that we live in. You know, this was our big upgrade. You know, we lived in a more modest home for 15 years and saved to move into this neighborhood. You know, we're close to the school now. Our kids are, you know, we were so excited to get there. And now this is what's going to happen to us. And, you know, we'll never be able to sell that house for what we paid for it. And there's no way that that's going to not decrease our property value. Most of the windows on our home face out to the north. So you will just, I mean, we'll sit in our living room and stare at people in their apartment right outside our home. And I just, I don't feel like that is very common because there's transition in how they lay out zoning. So I just don't understand how that makes sense. And I, I guess I just, I had faith that that just would not happen. So that's really, like I said, I guess where I'm coming from with this, we're, we're pretty heartbroken over it because like I said, it really is gonna change the environment of our, of our home and, and the retail, you know, the resale value of ever thinking of selling our house. So I think that's all I have. You guys have any questions for me? Any questions? And it's not just our home there. I mean, there's going to be all of us on that south end of 88th Street, four or five lots. We're on the corner of 88th and Brett, but everyone to the east of us will be affected just the same as us. So, I mean, it really, it really will devastate our, our values, I feel. Okay. But, all right. Thanks for your time. Is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this item? I'm Matt Edwards. I live at uh, 4120 West 88th Street. I'm just going to touch a little bit on my concern. Um, I have three young children. Um, since they built them apartments across on 85th, or on Brett, um, traffic has increased significantly. And I think they're talking about another 150 parking spots. We all know that there's going to be more than 150 cars in 96 apartments. Um, my kids love to play sports out front. They play basketball, balls roll out in the street. I see kids riding their bikes all the time. 
Um, so that's, that's one of my biggest concerns is that with the increased traffic and the curve that is there from Brett, um, that people don't, are, they don't slow down already. So you just kind of add that, that bigger factor for me and my kids and all the kids in the neighborhood that the danger for the kids increases, I feel. So. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this issue? This item. Hello, I'm Vicki Reef, and I live at 47159 85th Street. So I asked to bring this picture up just to give you a little bit the idea of the property that they want to rezone. Um, we live right to the east of that property. So um, my husband and I, we served 21 years in the military. We came back to this community because we wanted to live in Sioux Falls. We looked for six months for an acreage um, to buy. Um, when we did buy this acreage, it was back when 85th Street was a dirt road and there wasn't a stop sign at the end. We had a cornfield behind us, bean field across the street. And um, it wasn't that we bought this property without investigating it. We did meet with the city planners and ask what was the plan for 85th Street. At that time, we were told, well, it's rural and we do have nothing in the 15-year plan. Well, we have lived there 11 years now. And I understand that the community is growing and, and, and that's a good thing for Sioux Falls. I also understand that 85th Street is going to become a major thoroughfare, whether there's an overpass or whether it's an exit. And I understand it's going to be a four-way highway that we won't even be able to turn into our home anymore. But um, because we live in this rural property, our backyards are our sanctuary. We have invested everything, time, energy, money, into our home. We have a large Morton building that we built. We have a mother-in-law apartment. We had a huge addition put on. And the value of our property now is almost triple of when we bought it because of all of these improvements. But we thought we would always have our backyard. And now if you consider that along that line there, you're going to have at least 96 apartments with at least 150 parking spots, that is going to be our backyard. And you can talk about a 15-foot um, buffer zone, where well, a 15-foot buffer zone isn't probably any more than from me to you. And so that is what's going to be lining our complete backyard. Um, I think that the other thing that I would like to have considered is, as other people have said, the properties across the street were not rezoned for R2 moderate density. Um, those neighbors along um, over there um, to the northeast, they also came to the planning committee. They went to the city and they said, "This, how can you do this? How can you put these apartment buildings behind us? And then it was reconsidered and it was rezoned to be single family homes. And then you had the the Brett Avenue then where there starts to be a transition. They have um, townhomes and condos, all that have garages. And so I can envision that um, to the west of Brett is also condos and townhomes. So I can envision single family homes, maybe twin homes, and then you go to your condos and then you go, then you go to your larger apartment buildings. But it makes absolutely no sense that it would be approved to put a huge apartment complex like this next to single family homes. Um, it's our lifetime investment and and it would not be worth anything. No one's gonna want to live next to an apartment building. Um, that's our backyard. That's you know that's what we have. Now um, Mr. Costello did meet with us and said what would make you guys happy? I understand you don't want this apartment building and well, we said, you know, really nothing's going to make us happy. It's been, we've had horses grazing there. So, of course, you can imagine that the last thing we want is, is apartment buildings. And his reply to us was, what would you think about office buildings? You know, it would be 8 to 5. It wouldn't have traffic 24-7. Um, and we said, that, that would be okay. Well, 
So we're surprised. We're surprised by this. We're surprised that he came back with the exact same plan that he had before, maybe even larger than he was talking about before. And he asked to meet with us again. And when we met with him, he just said, this is what works for us. I, this is going to be an investment, and this is how I make my money. So to me, it makes me think that you have the big, the big person and you have the little people. And we feel right now like the little people. And we would just like reconsideration because we are citizens of Sioux Falls. My other concern is that exactly what they say. We would like to be zoned moderate density, and we could do this on that property if you allow us this zoning. But that doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. They could certainly build whatever they want. They could build as many apartments as they want. Because if you approve them for moderate density, it can go up to 144 units, I believe. So. We just ask that you really reconsider this and keep all of us in your thoughts while you're making this decision. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Nathan Schauer. I live at uh, 4112 West 88th Street. Um, basically, I just kind of wanted to show the board, if they didn't know already, exactly um, how close these buildings are going to be put to our property line. Um, so this morning, I went out and took some pictures. Um, this picture here taken is direct. This is basically the view that Matt has uh, when he looks out his back door. So 20 feet beyond that fence is going to be where, they're, where, the, uh, where they consider their buffer. Um, if you go to the next. OK, this one here. This is um, the property at the end of the street that, that meets Brett with uh, 80, 88th Street. Now, I think I just kind of walked it off a little bit. From the back of Angie's house, which is the fence to the north, um, Approximately 20 feet from her fence is where that uh, construction sign is. You can see it's orange. It's about 20 feet out. So basically, they're telling us that their building is going to sit right where that uh, orange sign is placed in the ground. So that will be her beautiful view when she looks out her window. Now, this picture taken is looking south on Brett Avenue uh, in the backyards of uh, Brett, which the road continues on to the south if you go up uh, another half a block. So basically, this picture here, if you continue going down this, down behind these houses, the houses that, um, the, the backyards of the houses that face the west on Brett Avenue, they have nice single family homes, homes budding up to them. Um, and it's the way it should be. You got single family homes with single family homes bought up to the back of you. Um, I have a couple. If you can go to the next one, please. Um, this is just a shot of, uh, of uh, Amy's property. Uh, this is a shot taken from the west side. Um, so basically, the buildings would be sit, sat right in there, um, I guess 40 feet from where her house sits. OK, and this is a shot from. Uh, I think it's 90, 94th Street, 92nd Street. This is the opposite end of where Brett ends. You can also see here in everybody's backyards that live on Brett, every one of them has single family homes that, that butt up with their property. Um, if you go further to the west, we have townhomes and single family homes. Nobody has a 94, you know, three apartment buildings sitting 20 feet from their backyard. I don't know why they're putting it there. You know, the transition was right how they how they did it before. They're they're doing single family homes, twin homes, and to the west of us, further west between uh, Brett Avenue and Tallgrass, they're going to build apartment complexes. That's how it should work. The transition and the buffer flows that way. It doesn't flow like this. They didn't want an apartment complex in their backyard, neither do we. I guess that's all really I got. Any questions? Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this item? 
My name is John Stencil. I live at 4116 West 88th Street. I guess all I want to say about it is, if any of you can imagine, if they were going to build a home behind me, which was a real good point, if they're going to build a home behind me, there would probably be 30, 40, 50 feet at least. And then I'm going to have, what are they, three, four story buildings? Because they're going to be right on top of me. Right now I'm used to looking at uh, just natural wildlife back there, which I like. And I know it's going to destroy the value of my home. So I'd really appreciate it if you take it into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience who'd like to speak on this item with some new testimony? Good evening. I'm Joan Franken with Costello Companies, located at 7409 South Bitterroot Place in Sioux Falls. Um, I am here representing Dan Costello as the owner. Um, Costello Companies has been in the apartment business for over 40 years. And um, approximately, I believe it was 15 years ago, they purchased this parcel of land along um, 85th, which um, you have seen the pictures of the gravel road there, but knowing that the city was going to grow that way. And the need for affordable housing continues and has continued over the 15 years and is at probably its greatest need right now. Um, to address some of the concerns uh, that have been brought up here, um, again, it conforms to the Shape Places plan. These apartments, um, we did scale the number of units back. And the plan shows the three 32-unit buildings. Um, it will be slightly less than that, only by uh, about four units. But it, correct that we could have built 144 units. However, um, we changed our plan, our concept plan, to only build the three buildings with 154 parking spaces, which if you only have 154 parking spaces, you only have 154 vehicles. So there will be not more than 154 vehicles um, coming out of this site. Um, with Brett Avenue being a collector, going on to the four-lane arterial street of 85th, there will be a stoplight there. That is designed to carry the traffic that will be coming from these units. These will be one, two, and three bedroom units. Um, so again, those streets are designed for this kind of traffic coming out. They will come out onto Brett and they will go to 85th and then get over to Louise. Um, one of the things that has been talked about too is um, the amount of feet that we've got to the south um, from the back of that building on the south. And there is room to move these buildings to the north. Again, this was a concept plan. Um, this is uh, something that we put together after the city council wanted to see what the proposed plan would be. Um, and so there is room to shift those buildings closer to 85th um, for the uh, side yard to the um, east, again, only required for 15 feet and we're providing almost 40. Um, one of the things that was brought up was the meeting where Dan Costello asked what would make you happy and it was office. Um, but that is not something that, that we do. Um, again, we build apartments and that's what this site has always been set aside for and conforms to the plan. Um, we do have this in one other area of Sioux Falls where these buildings, this exact building um, is Chasing Willows here on East 54th. To the north of Chasing Willows is single family, a single family housing development. And we have not had any complaints. Um, it, it is a good transition. Again, then it goes to more apartments and then to um, 56th Street, but we have not, or 57th, excuse me, we have not had any complaints on 
on anything, even the property values. And we um, do this in a number of communities. And when property values are brought up, that is typically not the case and where their property values go down because of a multifamily complex built next to it. These buildings, if you can see from the side view, the majority of the units are on first and second floor. There are only six units on the third floor, and those are one bedroom uh, units, uh, four one bedrooms and two two bedrooms on the third floor. So that peak in the middle um, shows what you can see from the side there. It's not a full three-story building, and it won't be a four-story building. So at this time, I'll entertain any questions that you've got. Commissioners, any questions from Joan? I think you answered one of the questions that he asked, and what question was, is this any place else? Is, there any, is this done any place else? And you did answer that question. So yes, it has been done someplace else in the city. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this item with new testimony? You got some new testimony? Uh, I guess reiterating my earlier point, or is that not allowed? Yeah. No, we've heard it once. Yeah, okay. we've heard it once, yeah. so okay. yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Seeing none, um, I'm going to have a call for testimony to be closed, uh, I need a motion to approve for discussion. Motion for approval for discussion. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, discussion. I have a couple questions of Diane, if I could ask those. What would the, um, the height uh, limitations or setback uh, requirements be if there were twin home or single family construction provided on this uh, particular property? If there were single family, it's 35 feet for a height restriction. And if it's town home, I believe it's the same as 35 feet. Is that correct? Yes. That's the height, did you say? The height restriction, yes. It's about the setbacks. Uh, setbacks, uh, single family, the front and rear is typically 25 feet, and side yard is 5 feet. And the uh, property to the west is zoned RA2, correct? Correct. You can see it in this zoning exhibit. So to the west of Brett is RA2, which is the same as the proposal here. And so the anticipation was that this would be part of that transition, the zoning? Um, it does make the transition well um, from west to east across Brett. Um, sorry, I thought I had a couple other additional images in here. Um, to the north there, we also have RA1, which is single family. There's some townhomes and then the low density apartments to the northwest across 85th and Beale, and then single family directly across 85th there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? Thank you, Diane. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair, I actually have a question for my fellow commissioners who are uh, in the real estate business. <laughs> uh, there were some comments about um, uh, having an apartment complex right behind single family homes and that impacting property values. Has that been your experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, it has been that, and that's where I'm having a problem with this, where before I didn't have a problem with it. Um, but that transition from residential to apartments, you know, it's, it is a little bit harder to sell a house that, I mean, they'll take a little bit longer. And typically when it longer means that you're going to price, you're going to bring your house down in value uh, to get it sold. So if you're comparing just down the street, the same house, it's going to sell faster down the street than it is going to be right behind this apartment complex. So that's kind of my problem that I'm having with it right now. But everything else makes sense so
Okay, any more? Anybody else got anything? Well, as I look at it, uh, you know, the, uh, the piece of property that hasn't been yet incorporated into the city is residential, clearly. Um, and it is a pretty abrupt uh, transition to go from that RS, uh, both on the south and the east, straight to uh, apartment buildings. Uh, that does seem to be pretty abrupt. I understand the theory of once that other piece of property comes into the city, it may be developed as more of a transition between those things, but we can't count on that today as we're looking at this piece of property. So the way I see it is uh, it is pretty abrupt and I tend to be opposed to it. Mr. Chair, I just wanna thank the neighbors uh, for coming out on a very cold and dark night uh, to, sh uh, to um, show your passion for your neighborhood. Um, we, there's most of the um, decisions that we make, there's no neighbors that come and to support or oppose. So it's good to see some uh, uh, citizen comments. So we appreciate that. Um, I agree with um, Commissioner uh, Irvin and about the, the transition and I, I uh, see your point of view and agree with that. That would be my concern as well, the transition issue. Okay, you more discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of item eight, signify by saying yes. All opposed, same sign? Yes. yes. Motion fails. Item number 11, please. Item 11, 5829-2016, zoned from the RD1, rezoned, pardon me, from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District to C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District for allowed forms located at 4801 and 4901 East Grant Street. Uh, Jason Bieber representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, the applicant here is proposing to construct an additional eight unit storage uh, buildings north of the existing buildings, as you can see in this aerial. Um, it is located north of East Arrowhead Parkway and east of South Sycamore Avenue. Uh, this lot does have significant trees, uh, and the applicant is proposing to keep uh, a significant number of them, the ones adjacent to East Grant Street. Uh, the concept plan that he has submitted does indicate the required uh, setback, 10-foot front yard setbacks off of unimproved East Grant Street, and they also are showing the required 30-foot buffer um, on the north side, uh, which includes that 30-foot, 6-foot uh, fence or 4-foot berm, and then the 40 units of landscaping um, adjacent to the single family across Grant to the north. Uh, the proposed uh, zoning request does meet the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan. Uh, the proposed additional mini storage garages will complete this existing development. Further, the required buffer yard along the north property line, uh, there's zero access to East Grand Street, and then the Grand Street right away um, should provide the necessary buffering and transition from these existing, uh, from the proposed uh, storage garages to the existing single family residential uses to the north. Uh, if this property is approved, the applicant can construct these uh, storage garages as seen on their concept plan. Um, if this rezoning is denied, uh, it would continue to be zoned twin home and duplex, and they would have to construct some sort of twin homes uh, adjacent to the unapproved East Grant Street. Because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan, and the required buffer yard standards should provide the necessary transition to that existing single family neighborhood. Staff does recommend approval of this application um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners, any questions of staff on this item? Thank you, Jason. Is the petitioner here? Please come forward and state your name and address, please. Yeah, my name is Jeff DeYoung. 2204 South Bonson is my home address in there. Um, like they were saying that way, this would complete the uh, development of this area. 
There's no access to grant. There should be no doors opening to the north. All the doors be facing south on those north buildings to it. Um, trying to maintain a decent buffer zone, not have any doors. Well, right now we have no lights on the facility. So there'll be no lighting issues or anything like that to come up. Um, other than that, you know, uh, any questions? <laughs> What are your open hours of operation for this? Is, I assume it's a fenced area yeah, that's locked. We, we have a six six foot fence around the property. Um, our off our gate hours or access hours are from seven thirty till dark. In the summertime, it's about eight thirty at night. At this time of year, they're closed up at six o'clock. In there, so people aren't in there after hours, shining lights any place um, with the. The 30 foot buffer zone, most of the trees in that area right now are evergreen trees or spruce trees. Uh, they provide a good amount of screening to it. Um, you know, the house to the east is actually ours. We have the, my parents live at that house at 301 South Detroit. Um, you know, there's never, we have never had any issues with anybody complaining about trash or anything like that around there and stuff like that. We've we want a clean facility the way it is, um, but to supply the growing city city people who falls that way as they keep going to this area, everybody seems to need storage. So it, but Mr. Chair, okay, yes, uh, Mr. DeYoung, do you, are you planning to keep any of the trees that are currently on that lot, the, or the trees on that lot? We will pro we are going to try and save everything we can within 30 feet in that buffer zone. Some of the trees will be moved from where they're at into that buffer zone. Oh, okay. To supply to supply more screening to it. Uh, all of our buildings is existing are basically like a pole barn type structure. It is. We've got uh, tan and brown colors for a neutral color um, you know it's nothing gaudy or anything like that the only in between the buildings there'll be the fence will be there um, there's no direct access out to anything but uh, the trees we want to save as many as we can okay. they all started as little eight inch trees to start with um, so they've been growing for a certain amount of time already right okay any more questions Right. Thank you, Jeff. Is there anyone from the audience that'd like to speak on this item? Hi, I'm Lynette Buckmiller. I live at the Landlock property at 200 South Lift Cell Avenue. Uh, we are good people. We care about our neighborhood. We care about our home. We thought seven houses were going to be constructed to the north of our home. These houses would have been a vast improvement to our neighborhood. Storage units, on the other hand, are for industrial areas, not residential. These units will decrease the value of our home and potential resale should be considered. Jesse and I are against 5829-2016 rezone from residential to commercial. Additional storage units in our area will depreciate the value of our home. The existing storage units are already close enough and the trees on the property at 4801 and 4901 East Grant Street separate the commercial from the residential. These new storage units will be right on top of us and 30 feet of trees is not a sufficient buffer. We have drainage issues in our area and additional storage units would intensify the problem. The current land absorbs some of the rainfall and moisture. The runoff from the rain and snow flows from the south to the north to our property. The massive amount of landfill to the north of our property prohibits the natural flow of water to the wetlands, detouring it along our property. Storage units and blacktop do not absorb water. Therefore, if the rezone is approved, the remaining portion of Grant Street needs to be developed. It is in city limits. It is a requirement the developer puts in the street, and I've heard the loopholes. There is access to this property on the corner of Grant and Detroit. Since we've moved into our home, additional storage units were already constructed to the south. Landfill was dumped to the north, 
and our property is landlocked because the city vacated all the streets around us and then would not approve the placement of Taylor Circle. All of these are a property loss value for us and so would additional storage units at 4801 and 4901 East Grant Street. Jesse has been removing snow on East Grant Street for approximately two city blocks for over a decade. We hope you consider these issues. Ask yourself, what if this was my neighborhood? Would you want storage units that close? We hope you support the single family dweller. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience that would like to speak on this item? I'm Jesse Buckmiller. I live 200 South LaSalle. I'm that <clears throat> gray colored house up there. Pretty much that picture up there is going to tell you everything that we got concerns about. They want to de develop that parcel of land. When we built our house, we knew it was twin homes that was zoned for that. We always looked at storage units. These trees he's talking about are about this tall for the most part. They've taken out the best looking trees because they sell them. If you go on, I can't ask you to do that. I come up here unprepared. I should have brought, I got one picture I took out of my house tonight. You, we're looking at storage units from our front porch right now through the trees he's called a barrier. And now he's going to cut that in half and he's going to put more storage units up. There's actually a crest on the hill there. So they're actually going to be higher up than what our house is. We're looking at them. If anything, they need an eight-foot barrier fence. If they develop anything on that land, they have to finish that road off. If you look to the Grant Street to the east of them, that road was put in three years ago. It's developed curb and gutter, sewer and everything. To the corner, it's not. Two city blocks, not developed. They're the ones that are stopping the development of that street. And if this development goes in with these storage units, it's just another way for them not to pay for that street. It's our only access, and the only access we got that's been given to us by the city. We deserve a paved road. We were waiting for twin homes to go in there to get the curb and gutter. If they're going to develop, then the street's got to go in. It's, it's uh, only fair to us. We're taxpayers like everybody else. We were built for four years before they vacated the streets. We were there. They took it away from us. And then they say, well, it's an unfortunate thing. Well, I think it's an unfortunate thing that they're the property owners to the land we only got option to go to. It's, it's a platted street, correct? That's a platted street, right? Grant Street? It should be developed. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. You can't make a decision by looking at a map. You almost have to be there. I should have brought some pictures. Sorry for that, but they, they will access that property from, the, from that end. They're not, there's, they won't let the public access it, but they will access it. There, there's no mistake. Any questions you got about any questions? And when, when you, you mentioned something about uh, the property owners or uh, neighborhood coming on up, we're it. We're half the, we're half the, half the neighborhoods here, them three houses. And Chester DeYoung lives on the one house, and the other people, they don't want the road in because they'd have to pay for it. We're not making them pay for it, but if any development goes up there, it should be developed. That's what should be done. 16 years, we've been driving on a mud hole. I got pictures of mud. It's a mud, absolute mud hole is what that is. We've never complained about it. We've never asked for it. But they're, they're forcing the issue. That's the way we're looking at it now. But that's all I got to say. But. Anyone else from the audience who'd like to speak on this item? There's two. My name is Matt Kleinschmidt. I'm speaking on behalf of our grandparents, um, my wife's and I's grandparents, Virgil and Dolores Benz. Uh, they're not able to make it today, so I'm just going to speak, uh, read a, a letter they have printed off for me. Um, Del Dolores and I will not be available to attend the public hearing tonight. As discussed with the City Hall, Dolores and I are not in favor of the RD1 residential to the C2 commercial. They live at 49 East Grand Street, which is right below where Jesse and Lynette live. Um, these storage units would be right across from the street from us. The storage units would greatly depreciate the, our property value and increased snow drifting on East Grand Street. I currently provide the plow truck for snow removal, a service of which um, I've been providing for the, that should be provided by the city of Sioux Falls on Grand Street for several years now. The proposed barrier is in, inadequate and the current trees and spacing between our property and the current storage units need to remain the way they are. We believe improvements to our neighborhood are needed instead. Please leave 80 or 4801 and 4901 East Grand Street as residential. 
Um, as the gentleman, uh, they were saying in the last um, rezoning issue, there's not a good transition from the current storage units to that residential area, the single family residential area. So by increasing the amount of storage units on that new commercial property that wants to be rezoned, you are um, decreasing um, the property value and you're just bringing that commercial property further into a residential area, which I believe that's, that Shape Places City Ordinance is, was designed to eliminate. There needs to be some type of uh, transition from commercial to residential, and by adding more commercial properties, you're just decreasing that transition. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions? No. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Doug Brockhouse, formerly from 122 South Phillips Avenue, since the building next door to us collapsed, we're temporarily uh, mis uh, misplaced at this point. I'm with Bender Commercial Real Estate, and for a half a dozen years, I had the property to the east where Grant Street is on the market for the Marvin Tripp family and uh, Donna D. Shepard. For years, we, we would come up with ideas and plans and ideas on, on uh, property uses over there. And virtually every time that we came up with one, we'd go down to the city, down to uh, planning and zoning, and ask about putting um, some sort of use there. And we always got the same re uh, response. You can't do that because you can't get the fire truck up there and you can't get the fire truck turned around because there's a blockade there and you can't get further west there, so you can't do that type of development. You're either going to have to uh, put in some sort of a hammerhead or, or cul-de-sac or whatever. So in selling commercial real estate, I always take a look at what are the access points and actually having owned several hundred storage units and selling those two years ago this month, the gentleman that bought those had the opportunity uh, just a couple months ago to witness one of his buildings burned to the ground. And when I take a look at this, you have no access for fire trucks to the backside of this property. You, and this is an opportunity at this point, if this gentleman wants to develop that land, he can develop it any way he wants to. That, that's immaterial to me. But I think it's an opportunity for the planning commission to finally put some teeth in and get that uh, street developed across there and to connect it into Grand Street. Anytime I sell a piece of property, I'm always held to my feet uh, to the fire. And you're gonna hear that later on this evening in, in another uh, item, the fat last item, about uh, how that process works. But it's your opportunity right now, you know, no matter what you do with this, but at least make that street get finally put in and provide access to these people in, in that area and fire access to the backside of these uh, storage units because they will burn. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Brockhouse? Thank you. Thank you. If it's new, yes, please. Um, there are three families that live in that. There's three families that live in that neighborhood that use that street on a regular basis. Um, one of them is DeYoung, and the other two. Two of us want the road put in. You know, we access it on a regular basis. Two of the three families want the road put in. Um, the DeYoungs are the only ones who do not. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Some, okay. The access that was mentioned earlier that is for the 301 South Detroit address that goes out to Detroit and there, the house on the west side of the property. That's not part of this side of the, the part we're trying to deal with. Um, there are, for fire purposes, there is a hydrant right in the center of the, the rezone area on the south edge of it that way. That was put in a couple years ago before we put, put the last few buildings in. To it. I just figured I would mention that since fire was brought up in that access. Okay, to thank it. you. Anyone else from the audience? 
Okay. Have testimony closed. Uh, I need a motion to approve. A motion item number 11. For approval for discussion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. I got a question for Jason or someone. Do we do anything with roads? Uh, engineering has looked at Grant Street, as I kind of indicated. Um, they have not received a petition for urban street improvements for Grant Street. If they receive a petition with more than 50% of the property owners, then they will assess all of the property owners that are utilizing Grant Street, and then that road can be constructed, not just the DeYoungs. It would be any property that's accessing East Grant Street currently. Like I said, they have not received that petition for street improvements. So that's the only way that would happen? At this time. And so if they went to city council, would it be something that they would look at at that time to, if they were to approve it or? If city council would approve it with the construction of grant, I, I, I couldn't say if yeah. they could do that, I guess. Mr. Chair? Yes. Jason, um, you talked about those with access to Grant Street. So adjacent property owners that don't use it for access then would not be contributing to the value of that street, correct? It'd be all be adjacent property. And what I was getting at, it wouldn't just be the DeYoungs and their storage units because they're constructing them. It's all the existing houses that are currently developed out there prior to the street being paved. So all adjacent property, property owners. owners. Okay. Yep. Just, just clarify. Yep. Thank you. And I'm going to ask, South Detroit Street? South Detroit Street is, at the time of building permit, that is when I believe engineering is going to require them to pave Detroit down to Arrowhead Parkway to give this site an ac a paved access. Okay, so that would be the access for the fire department to get to the back side of these. Yep, and the fire department has a comment in the staff report about the fire hydrant and they also will have to look at the site plan and then it will also have to have a fire truck will have to navigate the site to be able to allow them to construct those buildings. So before a building permit could be issued, the fire department would be? They would sign off on the building permit. Have permits. to sign off on that, okay? Correct. Mr. Chair, uh, Jason, um, with the current RD1 uh, zoning, uh, I assume there could be uh, adjacent uh, small garage buildings, single story, as an accessory to another RD1. Is that correct? Uh, Say those were uh, twin homes that had separated garages that would be uh, allowable under the RD1? Yeah, they could use accessory structures, yep. Okay. Mr. Chair, just yes. one more question for Jason. Um, somebody um, mentioned drainage from the uh, north to the south, or south to the north, excuse me. Has, was that, can you? He, he's showing some? a little detention pond in that northeast corner. Obviously, it's not the size or scale, but uh, when he submits for building permit, drainage engineering looks at this, he'll have to provide a pond or a BMP so the water can't discharge off the site any faster than what it currently does in its open form. So you'll have to detain that water on site and then discharge it at, a sl at the same rate as what it does now. Any more questions for Jason? I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, when it was zoned uh, RD1, um, would it have been anticipated that the street would have been developed as uh, a part of that zoning? I still, I, the, what I'm getting from engineering is if they submit, if they built twin homes there, they would still have to do the petition for street improvements and all adjacent property owners would have to pay for the street. The ones that are currently accessing it, um, the single family homes would also, because they've been developed on that street too, so. Any more questions for Jason? Thank you, Jason. Commissioners, any uh, more discussion? This is kind of like one that we approved over on uh, it, West 10th Street, or back right up to residential. I don't know if you guys remember that at all. I had one right over there that, on the way west side, that same type of scenario that backed up. So 
my thought process. I mean, I, I wish that road would be constructed, but that's not something that we have any power over. Um, but uh, I mean, just based on it's been done elsewhere that I think it should be done. Well, I know the way I look at it, and the reason I asked the question I did is because as RD1, this could very easily be a set of, uh, say, twin homes with accessory garages. It would, in appearance, be very similar to what the applicant is proposing. Uh, we've talked many times about how um, this, this commission not only considers neighbors and those kinds of things, but also we have to consider the uh, property owner's rights too, and so we always try to come up with a balanced solution that seems appropriate for everyone involved as much as we possibly can. And in this case, I think uh, the difference between the, the RD1 with maybe a series of accessory single story uh, garages is going to be very similar in appearance from those other properties as uh, the applicant is proposing, and so therefore I'm in support of this change. Any more discussion? Anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, uh, all in favor of item 11 signify by saying yes. 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 Yeah. All opposed, same sign. Yes. Motion passes. Item 12, 6007, 2016, rezoned from AG Agriculture District to O Office District for allowed forms located at 8300 and 8400 West 48th Street. Item 12 is withdrawn at the request of the applicant. Thank you. It just continues. We just need to go to 13 then, right? Uh, item 13, yes. <laughs> you <Okay>. can proceed. <laughs> <laughs> item 13, 6006 2016 conditional use permit for off sale alcohol within 500 feet of a school located at 2601 South Ellis Road. The applicant for this is Keith Thompson with Coke Hazard Architects. Uh, we also have a representative from Lewis Drug here, that is Scott Cross. The proposed project, thank you. The proposed project is located to the northwest corner of South Lancaster Drive and South Ellis Road in the S2 Institutional Campus PUD. Sanford is building a medical clinic um, that will be connected to the retail store where alcohol will be sold for off-site consumption. Uh, conditional use permit is required for the sale of alcohol due to its adjacency to the T Elementary School, which is considered to be a sensitive land use to the southeast. Um, I spoke with Bob Winkles, the architect for Sanford, um, who owns the property for this development, and he indicated that he has had conversations with T School, and they are not opposed to the conditional use permit. As part of the conditional use permit for off-sale alcohol, a security management plan shall be provided to the police department to address operational issues, including employee training and supervision of, cost of customers, enforcement of age-restrictive product sales, and smoking policy. If the conditions of the management plan are violated, the CUP can be revoked. Staff feels that the application has provided excuse me, that the applicant has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed and recommends approval. I can answer any questions you have. Commissioners, any questions of staff on this item? Thank you, Diane. Is the petitioner here? Good evening. Keith Thompson, 431 North Phillips Avenue with Coke Hazard Architects. Uh, I think Diane covered it. I was at the meeting with the T School District, and they're excited about the project, so no concerns. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Keith? Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Is there anyone from the audience that would like to speak on this item? Seeing none, I need a motion to approve. Motion for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
I have a personal question. I'm a retired Sanford employee. They're not the ones that are making the request, though, for this uh, conditional use. Is that correct? No, they own the property, but the building um, is Lewis Drug, so they are the ones selling the alcohol on site, so it is their request. Just, should I recuse myself? Okay, all right, thank you. All right, any discussion? Ask a question again. It'll be great for this area. There's really not much to grab and go with stuff over there, so it'll be great. And since the T school district has endorsed it, and that gives us comfort as well. All right, well, thank you. Well, all in favor of item 13, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item 13 passes. Item 14, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending chapter 157, subdivision ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, good evening, Kurt Peppel uh, uh, with engineering. <clears throat> um, just bringing forward uh, some ordinance language that just needed updated um, in relation to the subdivision construction agreement that uh, it was new back in 2013 and then also some secondary street access language that's um, being proposed to be added to the ordinance uh, just kind of clarifies some um, requirements for as, as we develop um, and, and get certain numbers of vehicles and units and things in a subdivision making sure that there's adequate access for emergency services and and others trying to access those subdivisions. Um, the, the subdivision construction agreement, uh, like I said, was pretty, it was new in 2013. It uh, really tied our development construction um, with financial securities where we ran into some issues uh, years ago when the, when the economy collapsed and we were left uh, finishing some subdivisions. This document now uh, protects us from those. Uh, it's been in place since January of 2013. Um, it's worked very well for us. Uh, we've actually executed almost 200 of these in the last um, four years. Um, just a number to throw out there, the, the, the project totals that I estimate as um, financial security uh, is about $50 million that we went through in the last four years with projects so uh, cleaning up the language is just um, there's a lot of people that develop land that aren't developers and there was some hang-ups with when um, groups of uh, family members would come together and um, we would run into issues where we would ask them to execute this agreement they would read it and their attorneys would say uh, we're not developers. We're we're a group of brothers and sisters, or whatever, that are trying to develop, and we're not developers. And they ran into some uh, issues with uh, taxes, I believe, and how they were being identified. So, um, our city attorneys worked with some outside entities, some attorneys, real estate folks, just used a more broadened term rather than developer. We're going to use responsible party. Uh, the, the agreement's still going to function the same. The city's not going to lose any protections. It just uh, makes it a more friendly document for everybody to use. So, Okay. Any questions from, commission, from the commissioners? All right. Thank you. Is there anyone from the audience that wants to talk about this? Item 14. Seeing none, uh, I need a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. Uh, motion for approval and a second. Uh, discussion? All in favor of item 14 signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item 14 passes. Any new business? Seeing none, I ask for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. For all of you.